you guys to the channel. Um, we're going to do an overview on the Super Tower Power, the RSSTC. Um, we've got the lab all situated finally with all the coils back here. So um, you can see the QCW over there. We have a big old um, distribution transformer right over there, potential. Uh, the ring toroid from this guy on the wall. And uh, you have the Power Power Junior right there along with the vacuum tube coils. And uh, we've got the display up on the board here. So I um, also have the lab coat from the show at Pensacola too. You have to wear it, but I guess tonight would be the perfect night for that since we're gonna be learning a lesson on the board here. So this is just a general overview of what we have with the Super Tower Power you guys have been asking about it. So maybe I can start and uh, go over just a few of the initial basics of it. Um, the input is 240. AC and it's rectified and doubled to 680 DC. Uh, the power draw on it is 13.5 kilowatts that has been tested uh, at 2.5 MS and uh, the max is potentially around 19.5 kilowatts. So roughly 13.5 is just over 50 amps and uh, 19.5 kilowatts is roughly around 80 amps, which I'm hoping to get on this coil. Um, the transistors consist of a CM300DY24H, and these are uh, two used in a full bridge. So you can compare that with your standard TO220 uh, configuration right here, and what you normally use inside of a coil. Um, any type of small SSTC or DRSSTC that a lot of people use. These are what we're using. We call them bricks. Um, they're actually very resilient when you get the phase lead and the coil running right. So uh, that's just an overview for you guys to see that. And those are used in a full bridge on this configuration. Um, so back to this. The secondary consists of a 6 and 5 eighths by 32 inch secondary. Now that's right here, as you can see right there um and a 30 by 7 aluminum spun toroid which is right here from eastern voltage research um that actually took quite a while about four months turnaround time on that the ring toroid is a 32 and by 7 and uh, 5 8 which was handmade and so the frequencies are different with the secondary with the aluminum spun toroid Resonating at 91.25 kilohertz and uh, the ring toroid over there, it's going a bit lower at 87.79 kilohertz. Uh, primary is detuned about 24% to 75 kilohertz. Now, there is a re reason for detuning uh, when you are freewheeling a coil, especially at DRSSTC. Uh, longer power draw, A, when you're freewheeling what you're doing is you're cutting the current instead of just shutting the bridge off completely, you're letting it ring down. So while that ring down's happening, you have a huge voltage spike in there. And with that voltage spike, the more you detune it, the more you can control that. So you can do longer on times without having a lot more heat since you're not pulling a ton of current. But anyways, um, the bus consists of four 6800 UF, 500 volt electrolytic bus caps. Uh, they're in series parallel, and that's in a doubler configuration. Uh, 10 470 nanofarad, 3, um, 3,000 volts AC, 6,000 volts DC uh, capacitors. They're Dawn caps. They're 80 amps RMS rated, 1,645 pulse peak rated, and those are each. So for each capacitor, that's what they uh, total to. Uh, the total capacitance on the MMC is 156 nanofarad, um, 18,000 volts alternating current, uh, 36,000 volts direct current. 160 amp RMS rated, 3,290 peak amps rated. Those are pulsed. Um, and that is 2.5 MS rated so far with the running of the coil. Uh, with the driver that I'm using, it's an EBR Phillips Solinsky UD Plus uh, freewheeling driver and the MIDI 1.5 interrupter, which I actually have right here. This is the 1.5 MIDI interrupter from Eastern Voltage Research. Um, I actually had a buddy do the acrylic guard over it and Everything else I just put together, so it's pretty simple. Uh, bare little box right here, and then just turn it on right there. So it's pretty cool. Um, 
two 5,000 to one GDT cores. Uh, when you're freewheeling, the way you're gonna phase these to the gates is on, off, off, on. And if you swap the phase lead right there, it's off, on, on, off. So um, either way your phase is on your driver, depending if you have a phase switch on there. Uh, this coil is water cooled as well. And that is actually right down there. So we'll be going through a little in depth walkthrough on this too, just give you guys an idea. Uh, the proximity from the primary to the secondary is one and a quarter inches, which it gradually spreads out as the inner turn goes around to about 1.5 before you hit the next turn after that. Um, one and a quarter is the most you'd want to go in on 680 volts. And reason why is because you have the chance for arc over too. Uh, chance for arc over erasing arcs from your secondary down to your primary. Now, with that being said too, you want to make sure that your lead that runs up to your primary is not hitting your secondary or your uh, strike rail on there too. Uh, for 340 volts, you'd want to go to about three quarters of an inch at the most um, inward, especially if you're running high currents with that too. Uh, secondary has been glaze coated with uh, about an eighth of an inch of glaze coat, epoxy coating. And we're going to do an overview now. So thanks for tuning in. Um, so here's just a general layout of the power system in this. We're going to start with the um, start with the transistors back there. You can see um, I have two uh, thousand volt, two microfarad snubber caps on there over the bus bars. The bus bars are quarter inch thick, half inch wide copper bar, uh, superconductive copper, and two gate drive boards from EBR on there. You have two um, 5001 GDT cores, and they're phased in on, off, off, on, or off, on, on, off uh, for freewheeling, because half of your bridge switches when it freewheels. So these are your bus caps, and these are your 6800 UF, 500 volt, and they're 550 surges for those. Uh, you have your 2001 uh, feedback and current transformers right there, and those lead to the 10 um, 470 nanofarad, 3000 volt AC, 6000 DC um, caps the Dawn caps, which are 156 nanofarad total, uh, 18 kVAC, 36,000 kVDC total rated. Um, your drivers over here, this is the Eastern Voltage Research Philip Sawinski UD driver, um, and your phase adjustments right there on your um, inductor that you can use to tune your phase, your uh, phase lead adjustment. And you have your current and pulse width limiter right there. And inside you start, you um, set a startup frequency. So when the primary actually knocks off the secondary frequency, it'll start to bring the coil into oscillation. Now, if the primary is tuned at 75 and you have it set to about 70, that would be perfect for it because if you detune more, then it'll compensate for that too. I um, have a big heat sink on the back here with some fans that I run. Uh, two multi-comp fans right there. And your water cooling right there. Have that hooked up to the front and the back. And they go through that little motor right there in the back. Maybe I can move it right here. So this is what controls your pump motor right here. And then you have an adjustable... Uh, driver power supply right here. So I usually only have the driver on. I've yet to use the water um, water pump, but I know it works and I know it's sealed tightly. Uh, right here is where you have your driver input voltage and your fans. Right there on a 15 amp, 125 volt socket. And then you have the uh, 240 input right there on a NEMA 1540, uh, I believe, four prong plug. So the wood was that was used was uh, teak with a honey stain and a Danish oil finish on there, followed up by Howard's feed and wax, and uh, 
just a little plaque right there. So yeah, about March, into March is when I um, started on this. I didn't get finished until about the end of July, I believe it was. So we're going to move up to the primary, which is half inch um, diameter strike rail on the outside. And then you have three eighths um, on the inside for the primary. I'll just run around and spaced at about a quarter of an inch right here. This is your primary lead right here from the MMC, which I usually just put it at seven turns generally, and it runs good for midi and for long arcs. But where I was running it, where I had it pointed straight up, it was um, about 7.4 turns out right here. About seven and a half would be right there. So... And it has about 7.9 turns right there. So anyway, right there is where I run the ground through the bottom. And it had the start right there of the coil and have this glaze coated all the way up. All the way up. And there's the two transistors as you can see the size difference of them um, just to give you guys an idea um, that's toroid um any general questions that you guys have feel free to leave them in the comments um i actually work a lot with uh brian over at scitube hd and archangel tesla coil um if it wasn't for both of them, I probably, and uh, Zach from uh, Lab Coach too. If it wasn't for those guys, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Um, I wouldn't have all these coils built and, you know, working on a QCW right now. But, um, yeah, I can go over to this ring toroid too real quick before we call it a night. Um, this was 3D printed by a good friend of mine, and he has one as well as well as these uh, PVC hands right here. These are just aluminum tubes, and I swage the ends on them and fit them into each other. And then just used a stainless steel braid cable, wrapped it around it after I super glued these together, these tube ends in here. Um, so maybe I can see if I can find my swage tool. Yeah, one of these inside the pipes, and then you just grab it and swage it around like that, and it'll open the tubing right up. But you got to be careful not to go too far, or else it'll crack it. I don't think I'm missing uh, too much on this, but as far as build construction goes, um, the do's and don'ts. Don't use black PVC um, before you start wrapping your secondary around. I hand wind all these coils. Like, I don't put them on a lathe except to uh, do glaze coat on them. Um, but what I can say is sand them down good before you put uh, your winding around them and make sure they're clean. And also, always do your testing before. Always go low voltage. Make sure to get an oscilloscope if you're going to phase them to the gates. Because I've blown up probably four. I'm not kidding. I've blown up probably four of these in a night. And these are $50. Just about. Maybe $75 actually. Now. Like on AliExpress. I think they're around $75. 60 to $75. Um, and it was a very expensive night. Probably about $250 worth of transistors just in the trash. In a matter of hours. So when it comes to playing with these guys... They're not like they're not like these tiny um, transistors right there. Like this is a whole new ball game. You're not gonna blow these up easily unless you have them phased correct or incorrectly, and you blow the gates right here. Like these, you can blow up all day, and you can throw them in the trash. They're easy to blow up. I blow them up easy, but these I'm still on my first set inside this coil ever since it was built. I've never had a problem. If you get it right, you don't have to worry. Um, have a new rectifier in there, which I'm probably going to put a Sanrex 
160 amp in there because that's a little 50 amp Chinese one. And I'm surprised they last as long as they do with how much on time I'm pulling. Um, it's easy to blow those up. So you got to be a little bit careful before I get the new um, rectifier. <laughs> but yeah, as you guys can see, like this is the uh, QCW on a different note. I'm just waiting for the current transformer to get here for my oscilloscope so I can check phase lead. I've yet to do phase lead on this one too, and I'm still getting pretty good output. Getting about 11 feet uh, maximum out of this coil at 680 volts. And um, I've gone up to 2.5 MS, and those little rectifiers do not like it. And I'm probably going to have to start water cooling it if I want to go that high. But as far as that, I mean, the transistors are pretty good too. They take a beating, never had a problem with them. I've blown up probably 10 rectifiers in this thing and uh, those switches are yet to be touched. So yeah, um, here's the half bridge setup, little CM312 I have in this, uh, this Tower Power Junior. I mean, it's a pretty cool system from EVR, uh, just the bus bar and whatnot. I've put everything else together. But they're fun. This one's non-freewheeling. And I can go over all of these in a different video too. But uh, this one gets about 32, 33 inch output. And then a dual 833 and your GU81. I need to get that dual 833 working. But anyways, thanks you guys for checking out the channel. And have yourselves a good evening.